today we're going to talk emergency propaganda. I always feel really weird about these videos because they seem so tinfoil head paranoid. But if we look at what's going on in the world these days, really having all our ducks in a row when things get weird is just common sense. Emergency communications is a pretty big subject. And I'll do other videos and on mesh comms and ham radio, but today we're going to keep it simple and just talk about smartphones. Why I think your daily driver phone isn't the, the emergency phone you keep in your go bag, and what phone I've settled on as a good low cost emergency phone that fits our needs. What you put in the go bag depends a lot on where you live and who you associate with. And remember, you may not leave the bag yourself. Maybe you're just fine. It might be for someone else if you are a good person and a good friend. We've all known people in bad relationships, dangerous relationships, even you big tough guys. Maybe even harder for you sometimes because you don't want to admit it. Or when you do, people don't take you seriously. But it can happen to anyone and everyone deserves the opportunity to get out. But as we all know, getting in the middle can be a recipe for disaster. So often, the best thing is to just make sure people that want to get out of these situations can, when they are finally ready to, and the things people need to exit bad domestic situations overlap with what they need for a natural disaster so that threat modeling is a good place to start our kit. You or your friend's house burns down with all the stuff inside, it flooded and everything is destroyed, or they have to leave without anything because a stalker broke in or domestic violence issues. In all those situations, what they or you need to get through the next week, that kit looks almost identical. And the first thing I recommend for that kit is a clean smartphone. So why not just count on using your regular phone? Assuming you've been able to grab it on your way out of the house, most people are using some fancy flagship phone with a fancy camera that needs to be charged at least twice a day, or carry a battery with it so they are juggling a charger and a cable and a phone. If you are moving between hotels or couch surfing, staying at a shelter or quarantine center, or trying to catch a plane, dealing with lines and crowds, whatever, finding a working outlet every few hours is just not a hassle you need and not where you want your attention going. In a disaster situation, usually you still have cell service even if you have power outages, but what charging outlets are available will have people fighting for access to them. So no matter what, you want a massive battery and you want a building. The weight of the phone is a tiny concern compared to trying to constantly hunt down power while you are distracted with other more important things. Second reason, not to use your regular phone. Anyone who has lived with you and has decent IT skills can probably track you. If they know your Apple or Google passwords and they might without you knowing it, they can find you. If their name is on the account, they may be able to social engineer a location from your provider. There are shady online location tracking services in a lot of countries and there's a variety of malware that's often used by domestic abusers. You need a clean SIM card and all new social media accounts on a clean handset. If you don't want anyone to know where you are, there are too many ways to track a phone that you use daily for it to be safe to carry. Okay, so starting with an absolutely massive 13,200 mAh battery, this is the Ulefone Armor 13. It's solid, but nothing fancy under the hood, to be honest. But the price is right, and it's what I think fits our needs here best. Let me unbox it and show you why.
All right, the screen is nice. Let's, uh, oh, the browser is also very responsive. Let's wheel the Husky in 3D mode. <laughs> Pretty cute. Uh, nothing special, but it is a mid-range Android phone. Nothing fancy, but it does its job. Okay, you all know I hate specs since they are all gamed into meaninglessness. But it's got a MediaTek Helio G95, which is an upper mid-range SoC. So obviously not going to have massive flagship speed, but it's still good for almost everything most of us use a phone for. No, you won't be shooting 8K video at crazy frame rates, but that's not what this phone is for. It's for getting the hang out of dodge or for going to ground and keeping a very low digital footprint for a while. It does all the usual stuff more than fine. It's got 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of internal storage. It also supports up to a one terabyte memory card, which is becoming unusual these days. And I think it's worth noting because that lets you store tons of first aid and survival guides, offline workopedias, detailed offline maps, and other emergency documentation that might save lives in the event cell phone service goes down. I will definitely make use of that. One very important thing, I spoke to Uniphone before I made this video and made GPL compliance a condition of the will. They very kindly agreed without a fuss and that's a reason right there to support them. If we have a choice between companies that steal code and companies that contribute code, obviously we only want to support the one willing to make a contribution. The files are linked below. Please do me a favor and ask your favorite tech reviewers to make GPL compliance a condition of their reviews. There are so many products out there to review it, it won't hurt them to skip a couple of GPL violating ones and most Chinese companies will go along at this point and release the call with very modest pressure from a big name YouTuber. GPL compliance leads to better software and better phones for everyone in the end and it's worth fighting for. Now, there are two very important accessories that I chose for this, and I think you can get them as a package with the headset. The first is a remote camera, kind of an endoscope. If you have to stay in a hotel or motel, you slip this under the door and you can see if anyone is waiting in the hallway or you can point it out a window. Yes, that's super paranoid. I don't care. It gives me better situational awareness without sacrificing my position. It's lightweight and I like having the option. The second is a wearable law enforcement style camera. We all see people trying to video a confrontation with a smartphone in their hands and trying to deal with an aggressive person. It's dangerous and the resulting video is generally useless. It often ends with the smartphone being knocked to the ground and the person holding it knocked down immediately afterwards. Now, when faced with a physical threat, as we all know, we need to maintain situational awareness, control the distance, keep objects between us and the person who poses the threat, circle away from their dominant side until we get an opening to a clear access path. If you can control the distance and if you are very small like me, you need to be able to shove up to try to protect your head. You can't do any of this effectively while holding a smartphone and filming. And if you don't get evidence, well, they can always try again and claim you did something to them instead of the other way around. Similar problems, if it's a disaster or some kind of social unrest, holding that phone distracts you and distractions makes you vulnerable. 
if you get the phone knocked out of your hands and under the feet of a mob, well, all your comms just got lost with it. That makes you even more vulnerable. The phone secure in a pocket and a clip on camera keeps your hands free to protect yourself. And with a wide angle lens, you aren't distracted by trying to point the screen somewhere. These little cameras are designed for physical confrontations and they do a really good job at just that. This one even works in the dark. It's a smart accessory to have for any number of bad situations that a lot of us might encounter one day. Now, in the event of a disaster and you have no cell service, I recommend Briar. It allows reasonably secure local comms over Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. No, it will not hold up to nation-state adversaries, so don't get carried away. There is also Meshtastic, which is Bluetooth to lower. This is a repeater node I made for Momo. Link is in the description. The Armor 13 also has a basic FM radio. Which realistically will probably be more useful than all that other stuff in most situations. It also has a laser range finder, which I can't think of any use for that. But who knows? The Armor 13 has both face and fingerprint unlock. Obviously, in the event of social unrest or domestic violence, those should both be disabled and a password used. Yes, you can still be compelled to unlock it, but that's at least escalation. Face and finger, they can just hold you and do it. I love a dress password that wiped the phone, so, so far, but so far no one supports that. The Armor 13 claimed 5 days of power. I've gotten about 4 days of regular use out of the other one I have. It also acts as a power bank so you can use it to charge your primary phone in a pinch if you are in a situation where it's safe to carry it. Again, even with radios off, there's good evidence that many brands of smartphones leak data. So if you don't want to be identified, don't carry a phone with any ties to your identity. Although in airplane mode, in a shielded bag is an option. Okay, final verdict. I often recommend different models of rugged phones, either for trace people or as a sturdy workshop phone. I think they make good second phones in general. I think the Armor 13 is a little too heavy even for a practical shop phone, but I think it's the best choice on the market right now, specifically as an emergency phone for a wide range of bad situations. It's the one you grabbed on the way to the hospital, when your friend is crashing on your couch because something happens at their place. When an angry neighbor knocks on your door initiating some sort of confrontation. If you are involved in some sort of social unrest and need to keep your primary phone at home so your involvement is not tracked. With the appropriate accessories, it really covers a wide range of bad scenarios. If you are like me and like to be well prepared or like to be able to help when people are in a tough situation and you have the budget for it, it's a smart purchase. Okay, that's it for today. I hope these videos aren't too weird, but there is tech out there that makes our changing and unpredictable world a little more manageable and I like to show it to you. Please remember to turn on notifications so you find out when I have a new video. And until next time, remember, if I can do it, anyone can do it.